I went to see him uh, in the attorney visiting room, Clinton Prison. He said, Uncle Jamal, there was a young brother back, you know, back in the prison ward. He said, Tupac, I can't believe it's you. You're my hero. You be getting all the women. You know, shot at the police. You get all the money. And Tupac said, double time out, young brother. If that's why I'm your hero, then I don't need to be anybody's hero. And he said, Uncle Jamal, I realize I'm probably going to die. They're going to kill me because I'm a Shakur. And my choice is, do I want to go out like Tom, Tony Montana from Scarface? Or do I want to go out like Malcolm X? And I want to go out like Malcolm. He said, I had been smoking, drinking. He says, I'm sober now. And I'm clear now. And then when he got out, there were folks that wanted to pry on that weakness. Hip hop, smoke that joint, drink some champagne. You can celebrate your home now. To his credit, within a year of things kind of getting out of control and the beast getting heavy, he himself began to recognize, not only do I have to step away from sugar and, 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 and death row, I need to squash these beefs. So he had this One Nation project. He created this thing called the Code of Thug Life. It caused a lot of young gang members to stop fighting, to stop banging in the hood. He started, you know, building the plans for that community center and for that restaurant and for those businesses and was going to, you know, move fully into film. He had gotten engaged to Kadata. So he started moving into that direction. The universe and God only knows where arts and activism would be if Tupac, as a young man, he was only 25 years old, how many of us had had those wild rides and had life-changing things happen, but, you know, did dumb stuff when we were in our teens and our 20s. But if he was still with us, I know that not only the state of the community, but the state of black arts and activism would be in a dynamic place.